Ms. Amelia Galang, Dean of Student Affairs, will now introduce the graduate who will give the response in behalf of all the graduates. Good morning. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce to you the graduate who will speak on behalf of the graduating batch of third term academic year 2015-2016. He is a well-rounded Lasallian who excelled in his academics and co-curricular activities. He is a consistent dean's lister. He has been a delegate to the National Model United Nations in New York, where he recently won the Outstanding Position Paper Award in the United Nations Environment Program. As an active student leader, he served as the project head of the 8th Business Management Students Convention, Assistant Vice President for Training and Development of the Business Management Society, and Executive for Student Services at the University Student Government's Office of the President. He also serves in his community as a volunteer for the Kapit Bisig Para Sa Ilog Initiative in Pasig and a governance leader for a feeding program he organized at the Mary Mother of the Church Parish. He is a competitive student athlete in football, judo, and mixed martial arts. Ladies and gentlemen, to give the response on behalf of the graduating batch, may I present to you the cum laude graduate of the Bachelor of Science in Business Management and recipient of the Brother Gilbert Cutter Gold Medal for Excellence in Business Management, Mr. Sang Won Hong. Thank you, Ms. Amelia Galang, Dean of Student Affairs, for that introduction. Mr. Jeronimo de los Reyes, Jr., President, Brother Raimundo Suplido, FSC, esteemed administrators, Chancellor, Dr. Gerardo Hanairo, De La Salle brothers, deans and vice deans, distinguished guests, professors, our beloved parents, and fellow graduates of class 2016. Words cannot describe the depth of gratitude that I have right now. This graduation is not just about the graduates, but all the people here. You were inspirations. You were part of this amazing journey. Good morning. Anyaseo. Ni hao. Magandang umaga. And to answer all your questions, yes, I am Korean. But no, I am not from the descendants of the sun, sadly. Four years in college went by so fast, and the highlights of my years were learning the word hugot and konyo from my Filipino friends. My parents are both Korean nationals, and don't worry, I was here before the Korean invasion happened. And all I can say is that I may have a face of Korean, but I'm a Filipino by heart. <laughs> I was actually born and raised in the Philippines. Before I begin, I want everybody in this beautiful venue to raise their right hand. Parents may join us, well. <laughs> now tap the person to your right and say, a job well done. <laughs> All right, great. Now I want you guys to raise your left hand. Keep it holding. Tap the person to your left and say, Boshta. <laughs> now, if you want to know what you guys just said, you can just Google it, but please make sure it is after the speech, all right? <laughs> that was a good exercise, right? We all need to loosen up a bit. I have another favor to ask, though. I want you guys to keep in mind the number 35040. 35,040. All right. There are three points I want to talk about today. 
And these are one, failing, two, giving back, and three, the ambiguity of the future. For my first point, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I wasn't the brightest kid in class, nor was I ever good in math. I also never had the typical Asian parents. I played UAP football during my first year. I was playing professional football in the UFL during my second year. I was very active in organizations and student governments during my third year. And I had a little stint in the DLSU judo team during my fourth year. And currently, I'm preparing for a mixed martial arts fight this December. Thank you. <laughs> I had a lot on my plate, but this was all because I was very blessed to be born with an amazing talent. The talent of cramming. And I believe 80% of us here are crammers by nature. Just kidding, 99% of us are. <laughs> which makes us all very talented indeed. To prove my point, which I believe many of us here can relate to, I had to write a paper with three of my fellow group mates where one decided to hide behind the bushes. <clears throat> Reloader, excuse me. So it's just the two of us. And we made a paper with more than 200 pages in just three days which of course we never slept in any of those days, typical here in DLSU. <laughs> then at the last few minutes before deadline, we submitted the paper. Then we waited. And then our professor came to us and said, this is the best paper I have ever seen. I wish I can give you more than a 4.0 talaga. And that my friends did not happen. It was the exact opposite. We eventually got a low score, and we didn't do that well in the quizzes as well. I sometimes felt like I'm not as good as my peers, nor my classmates. But I recalled Markiplier, a famous YouTube gamer, say this. Surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, and never be afraid to be the dumbest in their room, because that gives you the most potential to grow. Studying is a talent. Some of us are equipped with it, and some of us are not. Music, sports, cooking, studying is actually an art in itself. There are people who are naturally born with it. So never be ashamed that you got a low grade or failed an exam, because failing is different from failure. Failure is an outcome, while failing is a process. Thus, Failing is not an end in itself. It leads us to an avenue for us to grow and for us to learn. Look at each and every one of us here. I'm pretty sure most of us have failed in something, but we all pulled through and saw the light at the end of the tunnel. This is why you are all seated there. The key is on how we respond to failing. On my second point, giving back. I believe that the greatest lesson that DLSU has taught us is the value to serve those in need. The theology and religious education courses, the immersion programs that we have, all these things gives us opportunities to serve others. Even if sometimes we only have so little, there will always be that something in which we can give. I wanna tell you guys a story. I was lucky enough to go to an international school but the 2008 financial crisis hit our family very hard. There were times where we had brownouts because we couldn't pay for the electricity bill. We were planning to move house, school, and even sell some of our properties. For a few years, this was happening. But still, I saw my mother buying food for the unprivileged whenever she would see one. We never know how blessed we are until we experience these things. This is when I knew my dream in life, to build a school in the Philippines where everyone of all ages can come and learn the necessities of life for free. The amazing thing is that when we do good for others, it actually inspires others to do good as well. So inspire others, be inspired by others. Some may be wondering, why would a foreigner do this for another country? 
I do not believe in that. We live in a globalized world, and the world is becoming smaller and smaller, and at the end of the day, we are one. Thank you, De La Salle, for the opportunities that you have given us. And as cliche as it may sound, the world needs all of us. Just like a mosaic, contributions that we make, no matter how little, will always have an impact, especially when viewed together as a bigger picture. On my final point, the ambiguity of the future, I just got to know a special somebody recently. <laughs> but that special someone has told her friends, which eventually got to me and said that she is not ready for a relationship. Hashtag Galako my chance. <laughs> but I learned something more important that day. And it is that we are never ready for anything. No matter what age you are in, what situation you are in, anything can happen at any moment. So go out there and do what you believe makes you happy. Because time wasted while having fun is never time wasted at all. Others may look down on you, laugh at your dreams, but brush them aside. You are not living for them. You are living for God, for country, and for what your mission in life is. If you have not found your mission in life, fear not, because you have the rest of your life to enjoy finding that out. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be afraid of the unknown, as the unknown gives us so many reasons to keep going and to make this world so much better than how we have found it. Dr. Seuss once said, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. The chapter of our books as undergraduates has finally come to an end. However, we shall always put a green bookmark with a star on that chapter. Going back to the number 35,040, has, any, has anyone figured its relevance to us graduates? It is actually the average of the total hours we spend together as undergraduates here in DLSU. Let that sink in for a while. What an adventure it has been. And honestly, I'm just as scared as you are about life after college. But enjoy this moment, as it should be one of the happiest days of our lives. And you know what's even better? And you know what's the best thing about it? Tomorrow can be even better. Now. To the 177th batch of graduates, let us take this journey together. And before I end, I want everybody to raise their right hand again, this time with a fist, and shout Animo La Salle after three. One, two, three. Animo La Salle! God bless us all, and maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Thank you, Mr. Hong.